Hi everyone, this is Marco Fujimura uh, in my Princeton studio, surrounded by my paintings. Um, I'm going to take a pause from uh, working and I'm going to read you uh, the first uh, few lines from one of my favorite books of recent time, uh, Karis by Marty Yamans. I have heard tell that truth loves the light and is most lovely when most naked. And yet I have dreaded sunrising for half of my life and misliked the sounds of birds waking and look of naked skin when rose and gold were lighting up the quarrels in the window. And in meeting houses I have listened as the ministers raged against the wilderness, the lair of Satan. And though I know more of both the beauty of the trees and the burning flax flare of hellfire than any of them are likely to know, I do not deny the power of the gloom lodged in groves or the mystery that flashes behind the leaves, eager to devour us, eager to transform us. For this is the world of wonders, an enchanted place of dreams, portents, and prodigies. My mother woke me in the dark. I felt the absence of my brothers and father from the room as something empty and cold before I heard the black powder bang of distant pistols and the blast of musket fire. Mother's hands smelled of smoke, and I knew she must have been loading muskets while John, Joseph, and Isaac fired from the house with my father and Blue Jonas, our indentured man who had come to us only a month before, and the others, my uncles and aunts, and older boys' cousins, together with Onesimus, my uncle Thomas's African, who my father said should have been named Philippos, or friend of horses, because he has such a rare gift with them although I always thought that he was fond of horses because a rider feels so free on horseback. Mary lay curled beside me in a trundle, warm and breathing dampness against my shoulder. A mosquito hummed in my ear, hunting blood. Faint pink flushes washed over the room. Mother was murmuring at me, putting me to my feet and thrusting a gown over my petticoats and shift. She bade me sit and tugged on my wooden stockings and shoes. When I stood, she tied a blanket into a sling around my back. I reeled a little, still waking into the fear and the trembling of that morning. White smoke drifted into the room, smelling of brimstone. Climb down, white realm, she said to me, tucking my hair into a koi. The tree was no white elm, but we like to call it so because we didn't know the name. And there has been a white elm sent from the north of England, planted outside my mother's hall across the sea. Not that she has ever seen the tree, for her father, a younger brother with small inheritance and one of the godly, had sailed to his country in 1630 on the Arbella before the distemper of civil war broke out in England. The man had cleared the trees from near the house, all save this one might bore.